Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Tuesday, August 30th. Tomorrow's the last day, guys. August 30th, 2022. It's 3.36 p.m. Eastern Time as I am speaking and recording. Guys, thank you so much as we continue daily, daily, every single day to do these videos, read these uh, devotionals, tie in the Word of God with the title, with what the author's saying. Sometimes we get a parable and just got to let the word, uh, the word of God speak to us, let the Holy Spirit take over to deliver these messages, guys. So I just hope you enjoy them as much as I do. With that being said, I love today's title. And this is not me mispronouncing like I do a lot. This is the name of the title, the way the, way the author's got it. The title is Fishing Where They Ain't. Fishing Where They Ain't. And our lead off scripture is Luke 7, or I'm sorry, our study scriptures is Luke 7, verses 34 through 48. And it's another one, guys. There's only 50 verses in Luke 7. So I went ahead and added the extra two there for uh, for the, uh, the, the on the description of this video. And I've got it printed out. And I went I went and read it ahead of time. And this is good. It's good. Just it's good. Please, please, please go in and read it. I read it twice. Just listen to this video or this devotional. Listen to the video. Go back and read those scriptures. Read it twice if you have to. Read it three times. Just let God speak to you guys. But anyway, David Roper, and I'm sorry, our uh, lead off first is Luke 7, 36. I don't want to forget the important stuff. And the word of God says, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Again, guys, if you just read that verse, it's like, oh, that's nice. But go back and uh, read all of it, read 34 through 50, and just put yourself there. Just put yourself right there with Jesus. And David Roper writes this. I have a good friend I fish with who sits on the tailgate of his truck and scans the river for 15 minutes or more looking for rising fish. No use fishing where they ain't, he says. <laughs> this makes me think of another question. Do I fish for souls where they ain't? Mm, here we go. He's speaking. It was said of Jesus that he was a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yes, he was. He's a friend of everybody. As Christians, we are to be unlike the world in our behavior, but squarely in it as Jesus was. If I have only Christian, if I have only Christian friends, I may be fishing for souls where they ain't. Think about that, guys. Being with non-believers, fooey. Being with non-believers is the first step in fishing. Anybody rumbling and grumbling like I am right now? It's the truth, guys. Then comes love, a heart kindness that sees beneath the surface of their offhand remarks and listens for the deeper cry of the soul. Such love is not a natural instinct. Thank you, Lord. It comes solely from God. And so we pray. And the author ends in this prayer. Lord God, when I am with non-believers today, may I become aware of the cheerless voice, the weary countenance, or the downcast eyes. May I listen to others, show your compassion, and speak your truth today. Amen. Oh, guys, I could go on for hours on this one. Uh, right, you know, right off mind, it just, it just brings the question to me that the Lord continues, continues to ask me. And I think I've mentioned it on a couple of videos and ask yourselves this. Why do you go to church? Ask yourself, why do you go to church? Is it just to be surrounded by believers? You know, I pray that the majority, now, now, now this is, this is factual guys. I don't know statistics, but I know from the churches I've been to the majority, the majority of people that come to church are already saved. They're already believers. So going to Sunday to try and save souls, we're not doing that. I like to count, I like to call the, the church on Sundays like a gym. Like we go there to get in shape, to train, to get built up, you know, to get strength in our spirit so we can go outside of those four walls and go fishing. Don't go to church to go fishing. That's that's like going to the desert to go fishing. It makes no sense. Um, and like the author's saying here, and we talk about this all the time, you know, if we were surrounded by believers, 
then what, what would our job be to do? You know, that's not what God's calling us to do. He, we need to mingle with the world. We need to mingle with them. I will paraphrase here, but not be of the world. You know, the word says that we are of, we are in the world, but not of it. Okay. Uh, big difference. Um, guys, and we, there's, there is nine believers. There's, there is not a shortage of fish. There is not a shortage of fish. I think there's a shortage of fishermen and a shortage. I don't even say a shortage of bait because the word of God is our bait, guys. And just what the word can do in you to give you that appeal. You know, we cannot come off as judgmental Christians, you know, telling people. And I had this just happen to me today at work. Um, there's these little wooden crosses I hand out and I've given them to a couple of people because they've asked for them. I'm not going to go around forcing them on people and saying, hey, you need to hold on to this or would you like to have if they see it and they like it, I will more than happy give them one and pray for them. And I found out that two of the guys at work, they found out that, you know, that I was giving them out and that they hadn't gotten one. And they said, well, I guess he thinks our souls ain't worth saving. Well, guys, that never came off of my mouth or nor is that in my heart. That came off of their mouth and out of their heart because of where they're at. So that's two fish. But I think God's telling me that I might bag before the end of the week. And what's the bait I'm going to use right here? God's this prayer, you know, God's compassion. God's compassion and God's truth is how we catch catch these fish, guys. You know, Jesus said, follow me, and I will teach you to become fishers of men. And uh, it, it, this also reminds me of a dear brother, um, Lord, give it to me, um, Chan, Francis Chan. Francis Chan, uh, I, think he's, I think he's moved back to the United States since this, but he was a powerful pastor, evangelist, and preacher. I mean, powerful guys. If you ever get a chance to watch some Francis Chan videos, He's powerful. He moved back over to Asia, I believe. I'm not sure which country or which country in Asia he was from. He moved back over there because he said, why, why am I still going to church fishing in a pond that's dried up? Think about it. He's why I keep why I continue to preach to the same people that aren't even biting. You know, there's there's so many people, guys. This is every church. This is every church. And again, when I say the church, there's only one. That's the body of Christ. But I'm talking, if you if you want to talk and break down, just, just ask yourself that the church you physically go to, look around the next time you go. Ask yourselves, how many people are just there because it's a, uh, they feel it's a Christian checklist for the week, that they have to just go on Sundays to say, okay, Lord, I did that good deed for Sunday. Guys, that, man, that's such a lie. That's so wrong. That is not the reason to go to church. Main reason to go to church, of course, is to, you know, give God praise and glory and to, and to worship him, period. And we should be doing that seven days a week. But they, and again, like I said, you know, go to church, pray that God, that God gives the pastor a message that speaks to you, that, that you'll, you'll pound in your heart and it'll stay there so we can go out. That's the bait. That's the bait we get on Sundays, guys, so we can go out and try to catch fish. And then the third thing the Lord put on me a long time ago, and I believe I mentioned this on another video, is he said you can't catch catfish with a spinner. And again, a catfish is a bottom dwelling. They, they eat nasty stuff no eat the scraps all right kind of like a carp no eat whatever's dead nasty disgusting but a spinner is a nice shiny bright fancy thing that floats across the top at a high rate of speed a catfish don't want nothing to do with that and guys just got to ask yourself you know are you using the right kind of bait for the right kind of fish and you have to break this down you know read these scriptures and picture this parables guys you know when when you're talking with somebody that is a non-believer are you coming off with fancy words and things like that? Are you trying to socialize with them at their, I won't say at their level, because the word of God says, you know, I wish I could become all things to all people so I could win many to Christ. So there's nothing wrong with saying that. If there's somebody that doesn't know the word, that's okay, guys. But guys, I'm going to stop here because I could literally go on forever with this one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Ask yourself what's in your tackle box. It should be the word of God. That's your bait. Ask yourself, where are you going fishing? Are you going fishing? How often do you go fishing? We need to be fishing every day in this prayer, guys. I love this prayer. We need to pray that every day that God would send people in our path that we can minister to, that we can hook, that we can hook and reel in and bring to the kingdom and just uh, help help guide them as to, to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life. So, guys, thank you for joining me. A beautiful one. Until tomorrow, the last day of August, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says then. Love you guys.